Good morning, and welcome to the worship of God at the Huguenot Church of Charleston. We are thankful that you are here with us today, and especially you bless us with your presence if you are visiting with us today. We hope that this time of worship is not only meaningful for you in this, this hour of Sunday morning, but more importantly, it's exactly what you need no matter where you find yourself on your faith journey. If you are visiting with us, one small favor. In front of you is a little red book. If you would just please take the book, write your name and where you are from. We are just curious where you have come from and, and to, to find this place to worship this morning. So if you would do that and then put it in the offering plate as it comes by later in the service, we would be very appreciative. As a part of worship this morning, we, we, we will be gathering around the table for communion for the Lord's Supper. Once you come to the rail later in the service, there are different ways you can take the elements. If you would like to take the wine from the common cup, if you will steeple your hands like this, I will make sure to get you the common cup. If you would like to take the wine from the smaller individual cups, if you'll put your hands like this, I will get you the individual cups. If you would like to take the non-alcoholic juice, put your hands like this, and I'll make sure you get that as well. The table is open to all who profess Christ. You don't have to be just a member of this community of faith to gather around the Lord's table. So welcome to the Lord's table. Do call your attention to just a couple of other announcements in the worship guide. I'm not going to read them all. I will call a special attention, though, to our food drive. Our Linton food drive is ongoing until later in March. Bonnie Ula is going to be in the parking lot just down Queen Street after worship, waving at you as you bring your cans of your bags of canned food and other goodies to her to put in the back of her car. So if you have that, please look for Bonnie in the parking lot. It is a little dreary outside. It's a little drizzly outside but it is good to be in this place worshiping God together. Our help is in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Worship continues on page 92 of our liturgies. Let us pray. Eternal and almighty God, since we commemorate at this time the death of thy Son in the celebration of the Holy Supper, which he himself ordained as a pledge of his love and as a memorial of his sufferings to ransom us from our sins, we pray thee favorably to look upon us, miserable sinners, who are unworthy to be partakers of these holy mysteries. Sanctify us, O Lord, that we may serve Thee acceptably in showing forth with faith and joy the death of our Savior, and may glorify Thee by holy and useful lives through the same Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please stand as we sing hymn number 414, which is found in the Little White Supplement.
Please be seated. Today's lesson is from the Hebrew Scriptures, the 19th Psalm, verses 1 through 6. That may be found at page 507 in the Bibles at your pew. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit until the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Here ends the lesson. We ask that you stand to sing hymn number 230, the church's one foundation. remember my very first sermon, the first word I spoke to you was Emmanuel, God with us. And I've tried to continue that theme throughout the years, God is with us indeed. But as people of faith, we want some type of proof. We want to see or feel or hear that God is with us in some unmistakable way so that we know without any doubt, Emmanuel. We want that burning bush like Moses. We want God to speak to us so clearly that we know that we're supposed to take our child to the mountain to sacrifice him or her until God provides the ram in the thicket. We want God to speak to us in a dream so clearly 
that we know that it's God's voice and not just what we ate for dinner rumbling on our stomach. We want to know God in a very real, tangible way. And so we, we look for God. We try to find God. And the question that we ask ourselves is, where do we find God? Now, if we were children, and I was going to ask that question on a Sunday morning in Sunday school, where do you find God? Everyone would raise their hand and say, I find God in church. Yes, you do. That's the good church answer. But there's also a lot of truth in that. There is something about specifically this place. And I'm not just biased about this place, even though I'm very biased about this place. Whenever I walk in those arch doorways, whether it's a Tuesday or a Sunday, it doesn't matter today, the, the, the day, there's something about entering this physical space. The floors, the pews, the colors, the lights, the everything, the architecture. I know this is a different place. Nowhere else in Charleston, nowhere else in my life do I get to experience this other than this church. And without a doubt, I do find God in this place. And my hope is that you do feel a sense of God's presence as well. Whether it's here for cleanup or setting up for Christmas or whatever, or especially for worship. For when we gather and worship on Sunday mornings, everything seems to converge together in such a beautiful way that without any doubt, God is in this place. The music, the liturgy, hopefully the spoken word, all points to God and that we do find God in this place. Others of us might find God in art or in music, that creativity that us humans take to task, that we take a blank slate or a piece of clay and form something beautiful with our hands out of it, with colors and textures and shapes and everything just works so well together that at the end when we look at it, it touches our soul and we say, yes, without a doubt, God had a hand in our hand or in her hand to create this. And that is a glimpse of God. Some of us, though, find God in probably the most obvious place And it's not inside these walls, and it's not in something that we have created, but it is in what God has created, and that is nature. How many times have have you told somebody, I was outside today, and I saw God? What did God look like? Oh, I saw God in the sunrise, or the sunset, or in the beautiful, brilliant blue sky without a cloud, or in all the puffy clouds, or in the bird that chirped, or in the trees I sat underneath, or by the ocean, or by the river, or by the lake. Fill in the blank. The the words go on and on where we find God in nature. And there is something special about the nature that God has created. And it is no doubt, it is no coincidence that our scripture starts in the beginning God created. One wonderful way that God does reveal God's self to us through creation. Now, I'm not a scientist, and I don't exactly know the hows and the whys of nature and science and how it all works together, but I do know that if the earth was a little bit closer or a little bit further away from the sun, it would be a little too hot or a little too cold. It is just right where we are. I know that the earth revolves and rotates, and we have daylight, and we have sunlight. We have time to rest, and we have time to be active, and there's something good about that. I know that every living creature has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and there is a life cycle to that. Water starts in the heavens, it comes down to earth, it stays on earth for a little bit, it evaporates, goes back up to the heavens, and it has that water cycle that we learned about in elementary school science. That is no accident. There is something beautiful and wonderful about the way God has created all of this to work together. But sometimes... We don't notice it. We have so much. We have been given so much. We have accumulated so much that it's very easy to look outside and say, I see bushes and trees. That's nice. But we don't pay attention to that creation. We don't pay attention to what God has created, to what God is revealing to us every day. We live in a beautiful part of the world. Some would say the most beautiful part of the world. It's hard to drive over any bridge and not notice God's glory and what God has created. 
with the ocean and the rivers and the marshes and the Spartina grass and the sandy beaches and the palm trees and the dense forests. And that's just within 20 miles of where we live. We see those things, and, but they have become so much a part of our daily life that we don't really pay attention. We don't take time to really look at what God has given us and say, God is there. I see that. I revel in that. God, you reveal yourself to me in that. These gifts are a wonderful way that God reveals himself to us because they do give us everything that we need. The tree, the simple tree that starts from a little seed, an acorn that grows into something big and wonderful, it is beautiful. And it provides shade, which we love during the summertime. But it also provides oxygen, which we so dearly need to live. Water, which is abundant around here. We can't survive without water. Everything that we need for our shelter and for our clothing is found in nature. Those simple little gifts that God gives is revealed in what God gives to us for just our simple existence. Yet our psalmist reminds us today at the beginning of the psalm that Stephen read for us that the heavens declare the, the glory of God and the earth knows his handiwork. And sometimes we just need to be reminded to open our eyes and to pay attention to see what God has created because maybe that is where we find Emmanuel. Yes, in church. Yes, in art. Yes, in nature or music or wherever else. But with what God has created, that is where God is doing the most brilliant work, I think. My father grew up in Bassett, Virginia, small town in southern Virginia, near Martinsville, another small town in southern Virginia. We would go there at least twice a year, once at Christmas to see all the relatives would gather at my mamaw's house, and then once in the summer to spend about a week there. Bassett's a small town. It has one traffic light, and it flashes. It's that small. There's not much for a child to do in Bassett, Virginia, other than stay at Mamaw's house and try to find something fun to do, which is hard. But about 10 miles away, there's Fairy Stone State Park, a wonderful park, an, an oasis for a child to go and play. It's about a 160-acre park that the state has declared as, as a state park. It has a beautiful lake, it has hiking trails. You can swim in the lake, you can get, take a paddle board, boat out on the lake, you can hike the trails, you can camp. You can do all kinds of fun things, you can run around. And just seeing that park, it is a visual reminder of God's glory. But it's called Fairy Stone State Park for a very specific reason. You can see the beauty of the park, but the reason it's called Fairy Stone is because what's found in the ground underneath the dirt. Many, 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 many years ago, when the plate, when the earth tectonic plates were crumbling and moving around and doing all this other plate tectonic stuff, there were some stoliorite crystals that were a part of this creation process. And as they got crumbled and pressed and heated, they formed little crystals, little crosses, if you will. The Roman cross, the Maltese cross, and the St. Andrew's cross. And if we took a road trip right now up to Fairy Stone State Park, and I dumped you out of the bus and said, go find some crosses, some fairy stones, you'd be able to find them. You'd have to dig a little bit, but you would find natural crosses in the ground. Not man-made, not human-made, but something God created through the creation process of the earth's plates crumbling and squishing together. These are beautiful little crosses, wonderful little reminders that God was at work, is at work, and continues to be at work. It's hard to look at this cross and just not pay attention and take it for granted. This is one of those special revelations of God's handiwork. And I love the legend that goes with these little fairy stones. For it said that a long, long time ago, fairies inhabited the specific quiet and serene land just south of the Blue Ridge Parkway, just south of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The fairies roamed freely, doing all the fun things that fairy did, enjoying the beauty of that enchanted area. 
Well, one day the fairies were playing in a sunny glade when an elfin messenger came from a faraway town to proclaim the sad news of Christ's death. Well, the fairies wept when they heard that news. And as their tears fell from, the, from their eyes, it landed on the ground and formed crystals that formed the little crosses that are known as fairy stones that remain as mementos of that enchanted spot. What a beautiful legend. What a run, wonderful reminder of the power and the revelation of God, Emmanuel. I don't know where you find God. My hope is that you do find God in something, whether it is this place, art or music, or even in nature. The question that we must ask ourselves, though, is where do we find God? Where do we have Emmanuel? For as people of faith, we do need those moments, whether it is driving over a bridge and just pausing and saying, I see this marsh every day, but I know that God created that marsh, and God is revealing to me God's presence in my life. Thanks be to God. Or when I come in this place, there is something about Sunday morning in this place that I don't get any other time. Thanks be to God. Or that piece of art that my grandmother handed down to me that's hanging on my wall. I don't really understand it, but it's pretty, and that's why it's there. And somebody worked with God's hands to create that. Thanks be to God. When we open our eyes and when we pay attention, we will find the God that is with us. May we open our eyes and pay attention. Amen. service continues on page 137 in your liturgies it is meet and right and our profitable duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee O Lord Holy Father everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord who for us was made very man yet without sin who died for our offenses and rose again for our justification, who by his death has destroyed death and by his resurrection has given us eternal life, who has ascended up on high far above all heavens where he ever liveth to make intercession for us, who also according to his gracious promise sent down upon the apostles the Holy Spirit 
to lead them into all truth and to bestow upon them the gift of tongues that they might preach the gospel unto all nations whereby we have been brought out of darkness into light and to a knowledge of thee who also giveth us a spirit of adoption and the blessed hope of pardon and peace at the day of his glorious appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, O God most high. And since, O Lord, Jesus Christ, thy son, did offer himself as a sacrifice on the cross to redeem us humans, we beseech thee in consideration of this sacrifice that thou wouldst receive the supplications which we offer unto thy divine majesty for the peace of the world and for the salvation of all people. Shed thy grace, O sovereign shepherd of our souls, upon all the ministers of thy church, that they may set forth the truth and power of thy holy word, both by their life and by their doctrine, that they may faithfully administer the holy sacraments and diligently watch over the flocks committed to their charge. We beseech thee of thy goodness to succor all persons who during this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And finally, O Lord, we pray thee for all this congregation here present, for all thy servants who desire to be partakers at thy table, for all who show forth the death of their Savior and wait for his last and glorious coming, that through the communion and the death of thy Son and through the efficacy of the blood which he shed upon the cross, we may be delivered from the wrath to come and be found worthy to be received with all thine elect into the glory of thy kingdom. Hear us, O God our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and intercessor, who has taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, before whom we now come to partake of the sacrament of the death of thy son. Hear the confession of our sins. Together, we acknowledge, O Lord, our unworthiness. We deplore the enormity and number of the sins which we have committed against thee. And we do not presume to come to thy holy sacrament, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy great compassion. Have mercy upon us, O merciful Father, have mercy upon us. Pardon us for the love of Jesus Christ and give us grace this day so to receive these sacred mysteries of bread and wine that being united to the Holy Son through faith, we may live in him and he in us. We beseech thee to hear us for the sake of the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Almighty God and Heavenly Father, who through thy great mercy didst deliver up thy Son to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, we ascribe unto thee all glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who offered up his own body as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and commanded that a perpetual memorial of his death should be kept in his church until his coming at the last day. For the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, O eternal Father, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. This do ye as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Ye who truly repent of your sins and rely with confidence on the mercy of God and who also are in sincere charity with all your neighbors and resolve to conform your lives more and more to the commandments of God, draw near and partake of the holy communion of the body and blood of our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless thee that thou hast been pleased so to favor us miserable sinners as to receive us at the communion of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. We bless thee for having given him unto us as the bread of eternal life. Give us grace never to forget these great benefits, but rather having them graven upon the table of our hearts to grow constantly in faith and be fruitful in every good work, that our lives may be devoted to the, to the advancement of thy glory and to the edification of thy neighbor. Through the same Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee, God bless forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> people of God, having given your best to the Lord today through prayer, through song, and through word. May we all go from this place and be doers of the word and not hearers only. May we go from this place and pay attention. Go with God's love, go with God's grace, and go with God's peace. Amen.